present and my child's reading. Just remember to stay mute and keep your timer turned off if you have if you're not answering questions. For tech support, you can send us messages via the public chat for assistance. The seminar is about to begin. Honorable guests, esteemed professors, and my fellow students, welcome to a joint seminar series held by the College of Business and the School of Law. I'm Sixty, a year two student majoring in Global Business System Management from the Department of Information System. It is my pleasure to be the master of ceremony for today's event. On behalf of City U, I would like to welcome all of you for this seminar series. This event is organized by City U College of Business and City U School of Law. The joint seminar series aims to facilitate innovative idea exchange between professors and students from different faculties and areas of studies. Students are encouraged to be think outside the box to engage in and with emerging technology to create powerful and impactful global solutions. Today, we're extremely fortunate to have Dr. Kwon GG from the College of Business to deliver the seminar. Dr. Kwon is an associate professor of the information system at City University of Hong Kong. She received her PhD from the Cornet School of Management at Syracuse University. Her research interests include information security, healthcare IT, IT business studies, and business IT analysis. Her research articles have appeared in academic journals such as MIS Quarterly, Information System Research, Journal of Management Information System, and Journal of the American Medical Information Systematics Association. Now, I would like to invite Professor Y. D. Yen, the Associate Dean and Professor of School of Law, to present a souvenir of the, on behalf of the School of Law to Dr. Kwan. Thank you. Meaningful healthcare security does not meaningful use attestation improve information security performance. In the US healthcare sector, a certification mechanism for meaningful use attest attestation was recently adopted. Dr. Kwan will discuss how meaningful use attestation influences the occurrence of data breaches with its contingent impact on the nature of data breaches and the time frame. On the other hand, attesting hospitals offer short-term increase in accidental internal breaches, but eventually to long-term reduction. Therefore, Dr. Kwan's finding offers theoretical and practical insights into effective design of the certification mechanism. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Kwan. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for introducing me. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah. Um, I'm Chu Hee Won. Yeah. So the, I'm the IS Department of College of uh, Business. So uh, I'm very happy to have a chance to present my study in this seminar. So uh, thank you all for attending uh, my presentation. Okay, so uh, let me start uh, my presentation. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about meaningful healthcare security. So these studies try to answer this question. Uh, does meaningful use attestation improve information security performance? So here in the meaningful use attestation is the name of uh, healthcare security certification. Uh, this certification was introduced by US federal regulations uh, in 2009. So in the, this paper assess the impact of this, uh, the healthcare security certification on uh, security performance. Okay, so then uh, uh, let me, uh, okay, I will start. Uh, okay. Uh, 
the can I uh, click? Can I move? It doesn't work. Okay, okay. So uh, first, I want to show uh, this this one. Uh, you get this one. This is the medical doc. These are uh, the medical doctors' uh, handwritten prescriptions. So they are uh, too bad to understand, right? And uh, then uh, here, the, here are some kind of joke uh, was in the in the U.S. healthcare sectors. Uh, look at this. Uh, here is the medical alphabet. Nobody understand this one. Okay, so in the the actually uh, medical doctors' bad handwritten prescription uh, was uh, the nationwide issues in 2000 in the U.S. healthcare sectors. So here, uh, look at this the uh, um, the news articles in 2007. So this cause of that. In the look at this uh, doctors. Uh, doctor is a sloppy uh, hand, handwriting kills more than 7,000 people annually. Then according to the, uh, the, nation, the national report, the preventable uh, medication mistakes that injured more than 1.5 million Americans annually. So those errors result from unclear abbreviations and dosage indication and eligible writings. So in the, this, this in the, Bad handwritten, the prescription occurred a lot of problems in 2000s. Then in the, this, the eligible handwriting was responsible for about the 61% of medication errors in, in the US hospitals. So then in, at that time, then hospitals tried to solve these issues. Then many hospitals started to adopt healthcare the electronic healthcare record systems to improve uh, patient safety and quality of care. So look at this graph. In the, the this graph shows the uh, rate of the EHL adoption, the, the, the adoption rate of EHL systems uh, from 2009 to 2016. And then 2009, the 48% of US hospitals adopt EHL systems. But in the 2016, 85% of hospitals adopt, adopted healthcare record systems. And then many hospitals just uh, have adopted electronic healthcare systems. But in the, there are some issues in the look at this one. And then the, with the, the rise in the adoption of EHR system also create the rise, rise number of data breaches. And look at this uh, graph again. The, this the red line shows the number of data breaches from 2009 to 2016. So there, the number of data breaches, breaches continue to increase. Look at this, 2009, just 18 uh, data breaches occurred. And then 2016, the 329, the healthcare data breaches occurred. Then the, there are the two main reasons. The first reason is the, the digitalization of healthcare data created a larger pool of data to easily steal. So all the patient data were digitalized.
Department of Health and Human Services. So look at, uh, I, uh, I want to show this one. In the... Oh, okay. This is the World of Shame website. This is the website of uh, Department of Health and Human Services. Look at this. Um, this in the, the, the breach is the affecting more than 500 patients that were posted to the, this uh, website. Okay, so in the, then the High Tech Act have a very strict breach notification rules. Then if the, on the regulatory violation, this High Tech Act imposed uh, monetary fines the up to $1.5 million per incident based on uh, each incident's severity. Okay, so this is about the strict approach. The High Tech Act also uh, introduced the cattle approach. So this High Tech Act uh, provides some kind of certification schemes. It is called meaningful use attestations. So this study focused on the, these uh, certification schemes. These certification uh, schemes requires hospitals to adopt the security mechanisms in their systems, right? And then the, this uh, High Tech Act requires hospitals to attest uh, their meaningful use of the electronic health record systems. And then if hospitals attest to meaningful use attestation, this government um, uh, provide the financial incentives. So this is the, this is the, this certification scheme is very unique uh, characteristics because it uh, offers financial incentives to hospitals. Okay. Then in the, the, I'll focus on this, the meaningful use attestation for information security. So in the, then uh, let me uh, explain more details about the certification schemes. And the, actually uh, certification schemes have long been employed as um, the useful tools uh, for improving uh, quality management, in, especially in operation management. Right? For example, uh, the ISO 9000, the ISO 14000, those uh, certification so try to improve some quality management or environmental factors. But right? then in the US government, US healthcare sectors introduce such certification schemes for information security in healthcare sector. So this uh, meaningful use attestation in the aims to assessing effective and safe usage of EHR systems beyond the simple adoption of EHR systems. So many hospitals just adopt EHR systems, but they, they didn't meaningfully uh, utilize EHR systems. So in the, this certification requires hospitals to uh, uh, the meaningfully, the, actually meaningfully use EHR systems. Okay, so in the, the, I want to give more details about meaningful use attestations. Okay, so meaningful use attestation uh, meaningful use of EHR system is the, the first approach to offer incentives uh, linked to certification uh, schemes in information security. Okay, so in the meaningful use, um, the promote hospitals effort for meaningful use EHR systems using the stimulus dollars. So incentives are, are the huge. So in can, the incentives are provide for healthcare providers attesting to the meaningful use so this is the uh, this incent the incentives is the up to forty six thousand dollars for physicians the two million the US dollars for hospitals it's a huge incentives then in the this the meaningful the use program that consists of three stages but in the each stage is each stage has the, its own purpose the meaningful use. The, mean, the stage one meaningful use focus on uh, achieving the safe data capture and sharing. And then stage two and stage three focus on achieving advanced clinical processes and improve outcomes. Then the, this study focus on information security. Then uh, this study focus on stage one uh, meaningful use attestation. Okay, then in the, also I want to uh, introduce the uh, specific requirement of meaningful use stage one attestations. So in the, the this meaningful use, uh, stage one meaningful use that requires the 14 core measures, 14 core uh, uh, requirement. 
also in the 10 optional requirement. But in the hostels can choose the five requirement out of 10 optional uh, the requirement. Then in the meaningful, the stage one meaningful use requires 19 uh, measures, the 19 requirement. But in the, among the, four, the 14 core measures, the one core measure requires hospitals uh, security mechanisms. So look at this requirement. In the, this is about the protecting health, the electronic health, the information. So objective is to the protect electronic health information created or maintained by a certified EHR technology through the implementation of appropriate technol technical capabilities. So this is a specific requirement is just related to legal requirement. Uh, can you see this one, 45 CFR, uh, 140, 164, 308. This, look at this uh, in the, can you see uh, this, this one? In the, this is the specific uh, legal requirement. In the, it has very, provide very specific requirement here. In the, it requires uh, the security management, standardized security management process. So in the, this requirement uh, requires hospitals to implement four specifications. So one is a risk analysis, the risk management, the sanction policy, and information system activity review, the audit processes. So then the hospitals should uh, meet all those requirements. Then hospitals can successfully attest to their meaningful use, uh, meaningful use of EHR systems. Then in the, just so far I explained uh, the, uh, the, what the meaningful use attestation is. Then in the, based on the, this, the, the shifting, the, this the US uh, healthcare environment, just I, the, the, we uh, try to uh, examine the impact of meaningful use attestation on the information security. Okay, so in the spurred by the financial incentives, the left push of meaningful use attestation motivate us to quantify the effect of input, the healthcare security. Okay, so, and then the, the quite a number of studies examine the impact of security regulation imposing punishment. But in the, there is the little security studies that which address the impact of certification program uh, having the monetary incentives. So in the, this is very uh, the unique, uh, we thought this is very uh, unique contribution uh, of the, these studies. Also in the operation management research, researchers already demonstrated the impact of certification requirement, such as ISO uh, 9000 series kind of things. Then they demonstrated the certification requirement decreased uh, defect rate and improved quality. But in the, the information security is the is different from the operation management. In the information security has the unique characteristics uh, distinguished from uh, operation management. So unlike the operation management, focusing on the internal risks, the information security context must address not only internal risks, but also external threats, such as hackers attacks. Okay, so in operation management, the firms companies need to focus on their internal processes, right? Internal risk factors. But in the information security, the companies the need to consider, so in the internal and external risk factors because the hackers just can attack the companies. So look at this statistic, who are the bad guys? Okay, the, and then generally uh, data breaches can be categorized the three types in the, based on the, um, who are the attackers? Who, who the, based on the types of attackers? And then the look at this, the 42% of data breaches occurred by outsiders, the external hackers, okay? And then 33% of data breaches occurred by careless insiders. The 25% of data breaches occurred by um, the malicious insiders with the, some kind of malicious intentions. Then in the information security context has more diverse threat and high uncertainty. Then, then the understanding the impact of certification on the information security can extend the existing certification theories. Okay, so then 
in the here are the, just in the based on the this the context we the, the developed this research questions. So this study tried to answer the following questions: How does the certification scheme uh, influence diverse healthcare data breaches? The healthcare data breaches consider three types of data breaches. Okay, and then external breaches by hackers attacks, the internal breaches by careless and malicious insiders. So the we name uh, them the accidental internal breaches and the malicious internal breaches. Okay, so answering uh, those questions can provide policy insight on uh, effective security program. Okay, then so with these research questions, I searched some kind of theories related to the certification uh, schemes. So in the the prior the, the previous study is um, examine the impact of certifications the, on some quality or some other factors in the in efficient um, the mainly in the operation management area. Okay, so but I found in the two types of um, the theories and the two um, the theoretical basis in the the one is the some one theory has the positive perspective and the other one has the negative perspective okay so from a positive perspective of certifications so in the previous studies utilized organizational learning theory so organizational learning theory argued that uh, the to the extent greater organization efforts are exerted to acquire certifications the firms capabilities can improve. Then firms try to meet the requirement uh, from the certification. Then what well, firms can learn something from uh, the, the during the process. Then this is the, the organization learning theory that support the positive impact of certification uh, schemes. From the negative perspective, the, the some previous uh, studies utilize bureaucratic. So in the that, uh, the previous studies argue that institutional pressures can make the certification loosely associated with the actual practices. So then in the, this kind of the institutional pressures just create the check, checkbox mindset. Just in the, the organization just try to uh, the minimum requirement, meet the minimum requirement. They don't want to uh, something beyond the requirement. Then what just in the create the checkbox mindset, then it doesn't help the actual the actual performance. Uh, this is the some negative perspectives. Then in the, the this study is just to, uh, utilize both um, the perspectives. But in the because in the the information security have the diverse uh, security threat, and just in the uh, then this study employed the both uh, theories. Okay, so based on the, the theory studies, just we developed the hypothesis. In the first hypothesis addressed the threat of uh, the external breaches the, by the external hackers. Okay, so then in the healthcare sectors are generally lag behind the security systems compared to other industries like some financial industry. The financial industry has a long history uh, about the cyber attacks and defense. Then in the financial industry has very some um, the highly advanced security system, but the healthcare sector is in the, some kind of lag behind the other industries. Then hospitals are then the then this can uh, imply the word certification requirement can help hospitals to learn critical and basic security practices, right in the. The, during the meeting the certification requirement, the hospitals can learn uh, critical and basic uh, security requirement. But in the, on the other hand, there is kind of some increasing pressures because the external breaches are uh, occurred by external hackers. Then external hackers uh, continue to find the new ways to attack. Then in the, in the security, external security threat continue to be evolving. Then what there is the high pressure to uh, continually scan for evolving security threat. Then the, we expect meaningful use of testation may become less effective over time because hackers try to find the new ways to attack. So then in the hypothesis, the hypothesis one argued that meaningful use of testation is negatively associated with the uh, occurrence of external breaches in the short term, but 
the not associate with the long term. The or some the uh, uh, positively associate with the long term. And then the next hypothesis address the uh, threat of the accidental internal breaches. Okay, so the accidental internal breaches occurred by careless behavior without any intention of harm. Okay, so extend the accidental internal breaches, some kind of include the low tech incident. The low tech incident means some kind of in the um, employees just accidentally exposed the patient data to the website, or some uh, employees lost some of their fresh drive drivers kind of things. Then the low tech incident just occurs due to the ambiguity between the to do and not to do, right? But in the some the hospitals didn't um, put, uh, didn't have any uh, clear um, the, the policies, the security policies. So many medical staffs or work, uh, uh, their, the work in the, some cafe or some other there at home, but sometimes they, it's kind of very high risk, right? Then there is kind of some ambiguity in the security policies. So um, the certification, but in the certification regimes, can be effective for those kind of the leakages, right? Because certification regimes can help hospitals to set up clear security policies. Right? Cultivating standardized management processes can help uh, both detection and prevention of such uh, accidental leakages. Okay? Then in the standardized management process can help hospitals to find the more accidental breaches in the short term and then that it will be able to ultimately observe decrease in accidental breaches by learning from prior mistakes. So then in the, in the, in the hospital, actually many uh, accidental breaches occurs but in the, some, by mistakes, right? Then, and then sometimes hospitals cannot find the, the such leakages. Then well, in the, this is a standardized the management process can help uh, detect such uh, extent uh, the leakages also uh, ultimately prevent the accidental leakages. Okay, the this is the last hypothesis. The the, the last hypothesis addressed the threat of malicious internal breaches by malicious insiders. So in the Malicious insiders exhibit a wide spectrum of motivation from the desire for the financial gain to retaliation for mistreatment. The financial gain means that actually patient data is very expensive in the black market, right? Then in the, the malicious insiders can sell the patient uh, information in the black market. Also just the very disgruntled employees just so want to retaliate the hospitals kind of things. There is a wide spectrum of motivations. So the many cases in the malicious internal breaches are related to organizational issues rather than tech, uh, technological or security issues. You know, many, some kind of the, the financial gain, but personal issues and organizational issues. So in the malicious, the breaches are more the related to those kind, the non-technological issues. Then, but however, meaningful use of testation focus on implementing a security checklist and then evaluate evaluation of security systems. So more technological or security uh, perspectives. The insider is also insider is trusted and privileges, privileges the regardless the number of adopted security practices. So even though the hospitals adopt many security systems, the insiders already know how to access to the systems, right? They have some kind of login ID and password. They can easily access to the internal systems. Then just in the, the number of adopted security systems uh, are open useless. Therefore, the data could be vulnerable to malicious insiders despite uh, the meaningful use attestations. Then the hypothesis three, uh, the argue that meaningful use of testation is not associated with uh, occurrence of um, malicious internal breaches. Okay, so in the 
then the, in order to uh, test those hypotheses, uh, then the, the, this study collected the data from the public databases. The first, the, the hospital's meaningful use of testation information um, the, came from the CMS. The CMS stands for C Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the US uh, healthcare uh, website, the government website. This website provides a list of hospitals uh, which are tested to uh, their the meaningful use. And then the total number of hospitals uh, were the four, uh, 4193 and 4139 hospitals from 2010 to 2013. But among them, the 2743 hospitals are test uh, their meaningful use. Then in the 13 to 96 hospitals uh, didn't attest to their uh, meaningful use. Then in the, also, the, we collected the hospital information from uh, HIMSS database. The HIMSS stands for Healthcare Information and Management System Society Analytics Database. So this database provides a number of adapted the healthcare and security applications, also some kind of other organizational characteristics, uh, number of bed size, uh, operate, the operating expense, some other organization types such as academic institution or not, was some kind of um, a single hospital system or so multi hospital system kind of things. Okay, so then in the just I put the, some kind of the uh, the simple statistics and the number of bed or operating systems on the, the IT strategic plan was some the number of the security application, the number of EHR systems and some uh, number of the hospital administration systems. So in the, also we need to collect the, collect the data breaches. The data breaches were, uh, came from the HHS Wall of Shame website. In the, in, at the beginning of this presentation, I show some screenshot, right? In the, then uh, we collect the data breaches from the website. This website includes the data breaches affecting more than 500 patients. So we uh, the this study utilized data breaches the uh, privacy uh, right the clearing house website. This website also provides some uh, the data breaches with a very specific description. Okay, so and then so we uh, collected the data the eight hundred twenty four data breaches from two thousand ten to two thousand fourteen. Okay, so in the this is the simple uh, statistics in the external and accidental the malicious. Uh, the data breaches. And then, so in the, these the three types of uh, data breaches were categorized based on the, their descriptions. Okay, so I just want to show these things. And then the, as the external data breaches in the, some kind of malware detection and the antivirus, anti the, the virus attacks and the malware attack kind of things. And the external uh, breaches include kind of un, uh, encrypted the thumb drives was lost, right? Then this is categorized into the accidental data breaches. Also some uh, two dishonest nurse in the gathered information kind of things. Then based on the, this description, so we are uh, categorized data breaches into the three types, external breaches, uh, accidental internal and malicious internal breaches. Okay. So in the so far I explained the, uh, our data set. Then in the with this data set, then this uh, our research context uh, have some kind of the potential selection bias issues. Okay, so in the from the observable and unobservable factors. So in then in order to test our hypothesis, we need to uh, address those uh, selection bias issues. So in the first in the selection bias from um, the Observer factors uh, means that hospitals have, the, have less breaches, are more likely to attest to their meaningful use. So for example, hospitals have advanced security system. They, they didn't have any experience, uh, experience the data breaches. Then what? They are more likely to attest the meaningful use, right? But we need to uh, uh, the consider these issues. Also in the from, um, the, the, the selection bias from uh, unobserved factors, some address uh, in this case, in the hospitals with the security cultures, better security cultures, so, uh, uh, 
are more likely to attest to meaningful use. That means the security culture means in the hospitals can have uh, more some uh, better the medical steps or the uh, better security steps and the IT steps. Then in the our study, do not have any data about the security culture of the hospitals. Then this is the, uh, the omitted variables. Then we need to consider uh, this omitted variable, the impact of this omitted variable. Okay. Then in order to solve those selection bias issues, then this study adopts uh, two approaches, the propensity score matching and uh, difference in differences approach. So in the propensity score matching can address um, the selection bias from the observable factors, right? And then the, this uh, uh, propensity score uh, select treatment and control groups. Treatment group have hospitals are testing to meaningful use and control group uh, include hospitals uh, which uh, did not attest to meaningful use. Then in the, those groups are resemble each other in all other observable characteristics the before the meaningful use, the meaningful use attestations. Then well, this matching uh, create the statistic, statistical equivalence between two groups, treatment and control group. Then we can see some of the, the impact of meaningful use attestations on the information security in the post uh, attestation period. And then difference in differences address the selection bias from unobservable factors, then it estimates the changes in the hospital security breaches between pre and post uh, attestation period, right? Then the difference between the pre and post attestation period for each hospital so allowed us to control for influence on observable factors. Because this difference in the bear, the each hospital's the baselines, right? In the before and uh, the pre and uh, post attestation period. Then we combine uh, the combine the propensity score matching and difference in differences. Okay, so then the, the I want to show uh, the, the our research design. The our research design has the three steps. In the first steps, utilize the logic model to estimate propensity scores for all observations. Okay, so in the, this logic model, just look at uh, the propensity of the the propensity of hospitals meaningful use attestations. Say so the this um, the logic model include the prior breach, how the prior breaches, bed size, operating expense, all those these characteristic affects hospitals the meaningful use attestation. Okay, so in the in the next step, then the in the first step is the estimate the propensity scores and the based on the estimate estimated the propensity scores in the second step uh, match treatment and control hospitals. So you, then in the this second step just use utilize optimal matching technique. And then the last step in the third the third steps so this um, research analyzed the impact of meaningful use attestations with the two groups between the uh, the two period, pre and post attestation period. Okay, then in the, I will give more details uh, for each steps. In the first steps, I uh, use the logic model to uh, estimate the propensity scores, right? And then logic model estimate the prob probabilities of hospitals meaningful use attestations uh, uh, by including some the other characteristics, prior breaches, bed size kind of things. Then here are the result. The, the this result to show that prior breaches impact hospitals meaningful use attestation. And look at this one: external breaches and uh, the accidental malicious breaches have negative effect. Then if has, hospitals that have the breaches, then those hospitals are less likely to achieve meaningful use. And also the in the number of bed has the positive impact then large large hospitals are more likely to attest meaningful use right the, if hospitals have more security system also they are more likely to attest uh, meaningful use then in the this logic model estimate the propensity scores uh, with the estimated propensity scores optimal matching technique uh, was employed 
employed to match the control and uh, the treatment groups. So we utilize the matching difference uh, as the 0 0.003. And then we matched uh, in the two different terms, in the short term and long term. The short term is defined as 12 month, and then long term defined as the, uh, 24 month. And in the short term, the 850 treatment hospitals out of uh, 2743 attesting hospitals uh, were the match to equivalent control hospitals. In the long term, the 619 treatment hospitals uh, were matched uh, to equivalent control hospitals. Okay, so in the this, the, I just I, I put the this the result at t test. In the this t test aims to show the quality of matching, right? In the look at this this one. In the look, you can see the total sample and match the group. In the total sample is just in the whole the the, the hospitals, the uh, about the four about the four thousand hospitals, right? In the with the total sample, there are. Uh, those two groups have significant differences, right? In the number of bed and then operation, uh, operating expense kind of things, right? In the, we can say significant differences. But in the matched group, there is no significant difference, right? Then in the control group and treatment group has the statistically equivalent, right? Then in the, with those the matched group, we uh, analyze the impact of uh, meaningful use attestations. Then treatment <laughs> model. Oh, do you have any question? Okay. The treatment model that compares the treatment model the examine the impact of meaningful use attestations, right? In the, this treatment model compares the changes in external accidental malicious internal breaches between uh, pre and post um, attestation period. Okay, so in the, look at this. In the, this is the, our equation, the treatment model equations, data breaches are dependent variables. Then in the, there is the uh, treatment and after uh, meaningful use attestation and the interaction terms. And then treat, uh, the variable treat is the treatment dummy variables, right? If, the hospital, if hospitals attest, uh, meaningful use, then it has one, otherwise zero, right? And then the, and then the after MU means the some denote the post attestation period, right? And then if this is the, the post attestation period, it takes the zero, either the, that it takes one, otherwise zero. Then our uh, interest is on the these interaction terms, right? The treatment and uh, treatment and after uh, meaningful use attestation, post attestation period, right? This the parameter so shows the changes in breaches for treatment. The hospitals between the post and pre attestation period. Uh, I was. Okay. Never mind. Oh, any question? Okay. So then, just is uh, the result. In the look at this, in the this the result for the external breaches. Okay. So here, uh, in the the meaning, the look at uh, this result. In the in the those table shows the short term and long term, and then in the short term. The meaningful use attestation lead to better defense against external data breaches. In the, this is a negative uh, coefficient, and the, is, they are very significant, right? But in the look at this, in the in the in the long term, the those coefficients are not significant. That means what? Well, this the meaningful use attestations uh, do not have any impact in the long term, right? Then just in the meaningful use is is not sufficient to defend against. Uh, ever changing external threat over time. And then the next one is the accidental breaches, the result for the accidental breaches. And then look at this in the short term, the coefficients have positive values. In the long term, the coefficients are the negative. Then in the in the in our hypothesis, we addressed in the meaningful use of testation uh, the can help with the 
uh, both detection and prevention uh, for accidental breaches, right? Then the discovery of accidental internal breaches increase in short term because the, this attestation help uh, detections. But in the long term, then what meaningful use attestation decrease the accidental data breaches. Then the meaningful use attestation help prevention of accidental internal breaches. Then in the actually the over time has see reduction in accidental breaches with the meaningful use attestation. Okay, so then and then. So this page shows the result for the malicious internal breaches. In the look at this, in the in the this result, okay, and then in the, the results show that meaningful use attestation does not have any impact in short term and long term. Right. Then and then the because in the malicious internal breaches were caused by some kind of organizational or personal issues, right? Rather than security issues. Then the meaningful attestation do not have any impact on the malicious internal breaches. Okay, so uh, then I want to summarize the result. And then the first thing though for the internal, uh, external uh, the data breaches, then hospitals observed decrease in internal, the external breaches in one year after attestation. However, they did not see any further reduction in the subsequent year, the second year. So in terms of the compliance assessment, the meaningful use, the security requirement are, are grounded in the well-known security risks, right? In the, just the, the low hanging uh, fruit, right? Then just in the critical and the basic security factors. Then what, in the external, the threat continued to be involving, right? Then the unpredictable and ever-changing nature of external attacks Erodes the impact of meaningful use attestation over time. Then this finding what implies that what preventing external breaches requires ongoing effort beyond achieving stage one um, meaningful use. Then this stage one meaningful use is not enough to completely uh, prevent external threat. Then um, the this page shows the uh, summarize for the. Let's summarize the result for the accidental breaches. The hospitals better discovered more accidental breaches in one in the year following estimate the attestation, but this um, accidental breaches decreased in the long term. Then in the detection and prevention, right? in the organizations open do not realize accidental breaches without standardized and systematic uh, review system procedures. So. Prior to meaningful use attestation, uh, those breaches often went discovered, right? This line that with the meaningful use attestation, hospitals can find uh, accidental data breaches in the short term. But in the, in the long term, hospitals discover the human errors and monitor them through uh, periodic audit. Then uh, this ability ultimately uh, result in actual data protection over time. Then meaningful use, stage one meaningful use um, that can help the reducing, decreasing accidental data breaches. And then the, the lastly, in the, this study did not find any association between meaningful use attestation and malicious internal breaches. In the meaningful use uh, requirement focus on implementing security safeguard, but do not address other issues beyond uh, security, the other so organizational and uh, personal uh, the issues, right? Then external attack and external attacks and accidental internal breaches are more linked to security issues. Then, what well, in the meaningful use attestation can partially affect uh, the extent external breaches and accidental uh, internal breaches, but. Meaningful user attestation do not have any impact on malicious uh, internal breaches. Then in order to address malicious in, um, internal breaches, the organizations must consider more holistic approaches beyond, beyond security, right? More organizational and personal issues. Okay, so here are the, the conclusions. Okay. The, 
the our study is based on some kind of theories in the economics operations and information security. Then uh, this study empirically identified how the impact of certification mechanisms on information security uh, varies with the nature of breaches and the time frame. Right. We look at some three types of breaches. Also, we look at some uh, two time frames, short term and long term. Then the impact of certification uh, has a short, short lifespan on the prevention of external attacks, the whose techniques are rapidly elapsed by uh, next hacker innovations. The certification does affect external internal breaches over time by aiding both detection and prevention. So more breaches are discovered at first, uh, and finally result in better long-term prevention. Okay, then the meaningful use of testation helps hospitals establish technical and administrative the safeguard, security safeguard. The certification is a useful strategy for regard who lag behind the standard practices, right? But because the meaningful use of attestation focus on uh, implementing critical and uh, ba the basic uh, security safeguard, then those attestation um, appropriate uh, for the some kind of organizations uh, who lag behind the security uh, practices. So without the continued security investment and loading update, the static security certification will become less effective because well, in the security renders scape continue to be changing. Then in the static certification cannot prevent uh, involving a security uh, threat. Then policy makers should encourage holistic tactics. And the maintaining top security requires addressing a complex com uh, combination of both human and organizational factors, along with the most recent uh, security safeguard. Right. Okay, so uh, uh, this is uh, all I have in uh, this seminar. And then uh, do you have any questions and comment? Any? Okay. Any any oh the, the in the in the chat room in the can I can I see the chat room the no, I okay in the I I cannot see the chat the, I have some question on the chat room okay can in the <laughs> sorry uh, okay uh 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 I want to ask the PSM, the hospital's meaningful use should be time bearing. Is it uh, considered cross sectional? Okay, so yeah, in the, it's, it's a good question. In the right, in the, the meaningful use of testation started uh, in the 2011. Then hospitals have some kind of the um, hospitals can attest in the different time frames, right? Then I, I use kind of some um, the relative time frames. Then in the if hospitals the attest in the 2011, then well in the I just found uh, this the 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 I use the time frame in the before, but then it's the you know if hospitals attest a uh, meaningful use in 2011, then before the 2011, it is after the pre attestation period has the uh, zero right in the post attestation period is one after 2011. If hospitals attest in 2012, then also I have the different the, the different the time frame, right? In the before 2012, then the meaningful use attestations are the in the different the time frame. In the propensity score matching, then I uh, use just kind of some one-to-one -one, uh, the the matchings, right? Then in the based on the in the high the 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 matching difference is the in the minimum then in the first in the this uh 
control hospitals match to the uh, propens the treatment hospitals. And then these uh, hospitals are excluded in the in the in the the following uh, matching. So, did I answer to your question? In the It's a, in the not cross section in the because in the the hospital is one to one match. So thank you, Dr. Bon. I think uh, we don't have any questions now. So this is the conclusion of the joint seminar today. Once again, I would like to express our deepest gratitude towards the generous support and presence of our honorable guests and participants. I would like to thank our dear guest speaker, Dr. Kwan Thank you all for your participation in this event. And we look forward to seeing you again at the